just as you would expect from a workflow based on using the ANT landscape add-on, uh, which is short for another noise tool, by the way, is, yep, activating it. Unless you already have it in your ad menu here, you can go to preferences and type in landscape. And now we can see the add-on right here and just activate it. With that done, you will be able to shift A and right here, just hit this icon. There is even a shortcut, apparently, shift A, M, L. Hmm. Well, now you know. What appears is a default mountain that is created every time you fire up this add-on for the first time. To access the options for editing this terrain, you just open up this menu here. And one thing you should keep in mind, once you start editing this whole mesh, you will actually lose these options. Uh, well, not really lose, because in the later versions of this add-on, your settings are actually stored every time you edit them. And you can just go into the sidebar here, accessed by N, and find landscape setting again. These menus in the Create tab are basically copies of the stuff you can find here on the left. This, however, only works until you quit Blender. In the Settings tab, there is also a lot of self-explanatory settings, especially in this area here. You can name your landscape, assign a material to it, increase the subdivisions and size of the mesh. Before we go into all these settings down here, there is this awesome option to load up pre-made presets. So if you want to quickly get a base for all sorts of environments, hills, lakes, basic dunes, canyons, and not just that, uh, even rocks and some technical shapes, you can definitely use this displacement as a base. Let me actually increase the resolution slightly at this point to make the result a bit more high definition. Take note, this resolution option has a potential to slow down your work with A and T a lot. So I definitely do not recommend going overboard with it, especially while experimenting with the settings unless you really want to spend a nice part of the week fine-tuning one mountain. For us, 256 will do for now. To better understand this add-on, it is great to realize what is actually going on in the background here. We feed some values into it, and what the add-on creates is a displacement map in form of a texture, while simultaneously using this texture to displace a mesh that we see here. It automatically applies everything so that all we see is this displaced geometry. Basically, it automates all the steps that we will learn how to make later in this course manually. There are three main areas to play with in this add-on. The main settings here, where you can adjust the mesh. The noise settings, where you adjust the noise texture that is created. And then the display settings, where you can mess with the intensity of the application of the texture to the mesh. We've already changed this to have more resolution and here, since the texture is always stylable, you can adjust its seed to get different results. You can offset it along X or Y axis and increase the size of the texture. When playing around in this menu, think of the texture you are editing in the background, which is the source of the actual displacement. So if I increase the size here, I'm basically stretching it in X or Y direction. But let's not do that. Uh, the scale of the texture is actually fine as it is. Apart from the placement and scale of the noise texture, we can even change its type. But going into all of these would probably result into a whole new course. Uh, so in my experience for the mountain terrain we want to create, it is no coincidence that this rich multi-fractal is set in the preset because it really gives the best sharp results. Another noise type I like is this hetero terrain, but it's not really as sharp, so it's probably better for lower hills and mid-range mountains. There are many, many other you can play with. A hybrid gives smoother results, turbulent one goes up and down below the surface, and all these noises have their own settings. So here you can, for example, set it to soft or hard type, resulting into infinite variations. For my mountain though, I want to retain these sharp peaks, so let's set it back to ridges. The depth gives your noise a bit more detail, but in my experience, going over the value of 8 does not do much, as you can see here. Then we have more specialized settings below it, so dimension controls the sharpness of the rough areas, in our case the peaks. This means higher numbers gives us this weird looking ridge, 
where there is little difference between the peaks and the troughs. I kinda like the effect, but not nearly as sharp, so let's go lower at about 1.2, that will be fine I think. Lacernity controls scaling of each additional texture mix that is going on in the background, and differences between whites and blacks in that mix, which at this point probably doesn't tell you much. Uh, we will be mixing our own noise textures in the later chapters. For now though, it's safe to say that setting it to 1 gives you a very weird blob, which you probably won't use, and setting it above 2 will make the sharp details a bit more clustered. I like how lacunarity higher than 2 tightens the resulting peaks a little bit, but let's not go overboard with it, so a value of 2.2 will do. Finally, the offset controls the overall height of the terrain and gain adds more power to the noise texture, basically raising the lowest portions of it and adding that nice additional level of detail. Let's stick with 4.2. I think that for this basic setup, this is really it. You can of course play with some additional effects, like adding cracks, waves or spiral to your displacement, but it essentially adds one more layer of specialized detail to this, often messing up the result, so let's not do it right now. At this point you can of course still go in, adjust any settings you like, for example this noise size, but let's just set it to more or less the default value of 0.7. In this stage, it really is about achieving the shape of the mountain you like, so focus mostly on the proportions and the main features. Okay, in the display settings section you can set this height option, which yeah, it makes it higher or lower. And the minimum and maximum value control where your terrain clips off, defining the lowest and the highest point of the plane, uh, while with the offset you adjust the midpoint. This fall off part then controls the whole fall off to the flat ground. If you play around with this, the flatness at the edges will disappear. Finally, if you want to make the whole terrain composed of more strata or layers, you can do it here. That's good for various terrains with canyons. Not so good for us though. If you happen to mess up or delete your terrain and overall lose your settings window, as I mentioned, all the previous settings you've set up are in the memory, so if you create a new landscape, it will be the very same one as before the mess up. Unless of course you manage to crash or turn Blender off, uh, everything then will be lost and you'll be free to cry hopelessly in the corner. And that concludes this very brief introduction to what Ant Landscape add-on offers. In the next lesson, we will finish up the shape of the mountain and start exploring other options this tool gives us. 